More hand drill. Yeah, Marty, please. Meg Danforth. He's expecting Mike. Yeah, Marty, where the hell have you been? I need those numbers. Yes, I'm sitting. Holy shit. Are you kidding? I'm ecstatic. If you were here, I'd kiss you. I'll talk to you first thing tomorrow. Well, Jack, have another mimosa. Latest polls show we've jumped six points. You are now officially ahead of the incumbent. See there, Jack? What I think. Choosing Valdez as your running mate sent our numbers through the roof. What can I say? America loves Jack Cahill. Tell that to the militia crazies. He's gotten some death threats. That's what you got those guys over there for. Just they've wrapped us up. It's getting a tad warm out here. I'm actually breaking a sweat. Well, it's nice to know you actually do sweat there, Mikey. It's reassuring to us mortals. Of course, a lot of our success has been due to your generosity as well, Cameron. The support you've rallied for us in the industry. I just hope we can continue to... Jack and I go back a long ways. Whatever you need, I'll make it happen. She can't hit a tennis ball for shit, but, uh, but what a wonderful piece of ass, huh? Is there any way to talk about your wife? Yes. <laughs> Ain't that right, sweetheart? What? Keep playing. No wonder she's, what, number four? Five. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, that's me. Yep. No, no, I'm just finishing breakfast. What's up? You gotta be kidding. No, no, uh, uh, no, I'll be by, uh, give me about a half hour. Jack. Yeah. What? She's an old friend. What's a four-letter word for, I told you so? How about, uh, fuck you? Yeah, that'll work. Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. He's finally taking a rest. You know, I seem to recall a wager being involved. There wasn't any kind of wager involved. I beg to differ. Substantial sums are at stake. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Haven't we had enough celebrations? Never. There's no such thing. Mr. President. Meg, I'm not president yet. Oh, come on. It feels like somebody's using a jackhammer on it. And you call yourself an Irishman? Well, perhaps the new first lady. Mm. Don't mind if I do. Everyone, a toast to a new beginning. New beginning. Yes. Mr. President. Four more years. I wasn't sure we were going to make it for a while, you know. This guy unstoppable or what? Not 20 feet from the wife, no less. Guys, listen up. The San Francisco office just called in. We ran the background check on one of our media friends and it turned up a big red flag. Boarded Stephen Howard, seat 49E. 
The original check was clean. And they got an anonymous tip. All right, I'm gonna need to speak with the pilot. I want you guys find our friend, and cut him out of the herd discreetly. There's uh, going to be a debriefing, as well as a counselor standing by to talk to if you need him. Cahill wanted me to be sure and thank you for what you did for him. He also said that he hoped that men like you would always be there for him when he needed you. You did your duty, Mike. Sometimes innocent people get caught in the middle. One out, Ed. Listen, Mike. I mean, this was a hell of a thing to have happened. I grant you that. I mean, but that's what we're here for. It's part of the job. That woman died for a guy who can't keep it in his pants for more than five fucking minutes. It's not worth it. No way. It is not about whether he's worth it. It's not about whether you approve or you disapprove. He's the next president. It ends right there. Christ, Mike. You can't treat this thing like, uh, like you're some kind of boy scout. It's not like he's the first president in the history of the U.S. ever to get a little on the side. And besides, I mean, that is part of the job, too. That's the bottom line. The bottom line is, if it comes down to it, I have to take a bullet for this son of a bitch. All right, look, forget Cahill. Forget him. I need men like you. You give me six months, you still want on after that, I make sure you go wherever you want. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I got a better idea than that. How about this? Um, you stick it out. Come inauguration day, I promise you, you will not have to take a bullet for this guy. How's that? Gentlemen, you are now being given responsibility for the president's mobile command center, the football. This is an exact non-functioning replica, the item itself being at this moment exactly where it should be, which is never more than 40 feet from the president, rain or shine, day or night. You may not be in the same room with the man, but you must always be within 30 seconds of contact should the need arise. Three people will know the combination of this case at any given moment. Yourself and the two other agents on football duty with you. The case can only be opened under presidential order. Nine agents rotate football duty with three alternates standing by. The president has the absolute complete power to launch nuclear war. He controls all commands going to NORAD, to Looking Glass, 
and to the satellites controlling our missile silos and nuclear submarines throughout the world. This is Armageddon in a box. Your purpose is to provide the president with this power, should the need arise. Only the president has the access codes required to launch. Activation of the control panel is achieved via two keys. One is carried by you. The other stays on the president's person at all times. Control access requires thumbprint and retinal analysis. The president and his successors are encoded into the fail-safe system. If the president is killed, the agent in charge must change the access codes to accept his next immediate successor. Your prime directive is to protect this briefcase and the men protecting this briefcase. The president is not your concern. Other agents handle that duty. If somebody makes a play for the president, you cover the briefcase. No matter what happens, the care and the protection of this briefcase is your primary job function. That is all. We need a statement, Jack. We've got to give him something, anything. Mr. President, we have less than five minutes. Megan, for once, shut the hell up. Okay? You really think they're gonna do this? Invade? Well, the Chinese have never ruled out the use of force vis-a-vis -vis reunification with Taiwan. This could be the usual posturing. I feel there's a butt here. I think they're serious this time. They're testing us, for Christ's sake. They're testing me, you mean? Of course. You've been in office, what, six months? Timing for them is, well, don't get no better than this. He's right, sir. They probably feel they have you right where they want you. And our friends in the Senate aren't helping matters any with this investigation into your political finances. You can't even dignify what the committee's doing with the title of investigation. Leave that as it may. The situation is problematic as well, sir. Mr. President, when you send the Nebitz battle group into the South China Sea, they will back down. They always do. And a little saber rattling always drives the poll numbers up a point or two as well. I'll worry about the polls, General, if it's all right with you. Your recommendations, David? Well, condemn the Chinese actions in public, obviously. Boycott the Pacific Rim Summit next week, if necessary. In the meantime, there are other private channels that you might avail yourself of, which, uh, although risky, might keep the dialogue with the Chinese leadership open. Ken Fung. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, Jack. That is, pardon my French, political fucking suicide. You meet with Fung and the media, not to mention the Judiciary Committee, will hand you your ass on a platter. Yes, but the beauty of it is, Meg, is that it's my ass. What time is it in Taiwan? <laughs> Truly, Jack, there's no need to apologize. I've been up for several hours. And it's always good to hear from my old professor. Now, Ken, did you have to say old? I'm sorry, Jack. No offense intended. I meant former. Good. That, that'll be fine. I'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you. Goodbye. He'll do it. We're going to meet two days before the Pacific Rim Summit. Not in Washington, I hope. No, 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 no. Aboard his boat. Sumeru. There's one condition, one on one. I know, David, I know, but these are his rules, not mine. Where are you going? I thought I might get some work done, sir. Wait a minute. Gentlemen, will you excuse us? Sit down. Smile, Meg. You knew there'd be days like this. All right. Look, I'm sorry I told you to shut up, if that's what this is about. Oh, please, Jack. By now, my skin is a little thicker than that. Give me some credit. 
No, this is about me doing my job, which basically adds up to me trying to keep you from stepping in dog shit and cleaning your shoes when you do. I know, I know. No. Sir, I've got to strenuously advise you not to do this. More dealings with Fong will do nothing but exacerbate the situation on the Hill. Hey, I didn't raise those campaign contributions. You did. With all due respect, sir, I also did not sleep with Cameron Ellis's wife. You did. And you'd rather it be you. That's low. I think I've adjusted damn well to the way you wanted things between us. No, you said do anything to win, sir. No punches were to be pulled. That's exactly what you told me. The money had to come from somewhere. I think I know where this is going, but I want to hear it from you. Go ahead. You meet with Fang, you leave me no choice but to resign. That'll save me the trouble of firing you. And don't think I wouldn't. And don't think I don't know that you know where the bodies are buried. I don't like being threatened, Meg. Don't try it again. That wasn't a threat, Jack. I'll type up a resignation letter just for the hell of it. But it's effective as of right now. Good for a beer, Gary? Can't. Not now. I'm talking about when you're finished. I'm buying. I'm in. Anything for a free beer. You don't have to tell us that. You calling me cheap? Take it however you want to. I'm hurt, Mike, deeply. So where are we going? You call it, Gary. Look, guys, I'd love to go, but I can't. It's my kid's birthday today. I gotta stop on the way back from work, pick him up something. You know, there's a toy Orama right across from the King Arthur pub. Since when? They just built it. Since last week. I swear to God. Anybody going to King Arthur tonight better be drinking club soda. How about milk? <sighs> Shut up, Conley. Burke might have put up with that shit, but I don't have to. The advance team arrived in Taipei. Burke's meeting Thornton on the ship tomorrow to solidify security arrangements. Mission packs for the trip. I want everybody here at 0430. Sharp. See you then. to the party, Agent Phillips. Don't let go of either bag, or things will get very unpleasant. On your knees. Who are you? What do you want? What I want, Agent Phillips, is for you to listen very carefully. Now, no one's gonna get hurt as long as you do exactly what we tell you to do. Exactly. The moment you disobey an order, someone's gonna die. Do you understand? Good. just any guest we're dealing with. The President of the United States is never in a room with armed men or women other than his own Secret Service agents who work for an organization which I am privileged to have served with for, well, I'm not even going to tell you how long. I know some of you have been with Mr. Fung longer than I. And you're trained to trust no one, and that's a good thing. But let me say this. I know these men. I have worked by their side. 
And I can assure you they present no danger whatsoever to Mr. Funk. And I'll stake my life on that. Therefore, we will show our good faith and spirit of cooperation during the president's visit by relinquishing our weapons and placing them in the care of our guests for the duration of the president's visit aboard the Sumeru. Anyone not willing to abide by this rule will be left here in Taipei until we return. In addition, some of you may be reassigned other service duties. It's not going to kill you to serve a couple of drinks. And you'll be saving my friend here the time of doing security checks on the regular service staff as well as us. Questions? All right, we meet back here in an hour to go over specifics. Guys got all the toys, huh? Oh, yeah. I noticed uh, one of your men was missing. I think his name is Wu. He had a family emergency he had to take care of. Okay. You know, I really do appreciate your cooperation on this, Craig. You made this a lot easier than it could have been. No problem. Happy to do it. Yeah, they weren't. Well, no professional willingly gives up the tools of his trade. Well, they sure as hell snap, too. I'll say that. They must be doing a hell of a job to get that kind of loyalty. It's all about. Yeah, loyalty. Oh, I've always thought so. I just didn't think you did anymore. What are you talking about? Well, I don't know. I mean, I take a look around. It's not that hard to figure out. I mean, it's nice work if you can get it. The suit cost me a month's salary. Well, you think it's the money? Yeah, isn't it? You a shit about the money? I mean, it's nice, but it's Cahill. The guy's a scumbag. I was praying he didn't get elected. When he did, I knew I couldn't take a bullet for him. <laughs> wow. What's so funny? Nothing. I was just having a deja vu experience. Someone else just uh, told me the exact same damn thing. Huh? Who? Oh. This isn't like him. Is he here yet? He just paged him. He'll be here any minute. Supposed to be here five minutes ago. Well, it's his kid's birthday. Cut him some slack. Don't try and cover for him, Connolly. This isn't a goddamn school playground. I know it's not a playground. He'll be here any second. Excuse me. Sorry. Couldn't be avoided. Goddamn well coulda. Coulda left five minutes earlier. It won't happen again. You better believe it won't. And if it does, your kid better be on his damn deathbed, not just having a fucking birthday party. What? 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 Relax, Gary. Kurt's on the rag again today. Just relax. Fuck you, Connolly. I'll report your ass, too. Like I said, Kurt's on the rag. Hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Put that in your report. Burke won't be able to help you this time, Connolly. You're done. Oh, shit. So, Mike, what are your plans now that you'll be retiring from public service? Sad the presents go over. Presents. How'd your kids like them? Oh, great. Is everything all right, Gary? Yeah, I'm fine. Karen and I are going through a rough time, that's all. Oh, no, that one goes. So do you. We'll get through it. I hope you're luckier than I was. <laughs> hey, Mikey. Wolverine wants to speak with you. You want to speak with me? How's your cholesterol, Connolly? I haven't had mine checked in a while, sir. Mine sucks. 285. You look fit, sir. Looks can be deceiving. I'm on this freaking machine every day. Guess there's a price for everything, right? Yes, sir. There is. I 
Elroy tells me you're leaving this detail. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I felt like popping him a few times myself every now and then. Toss me that, will you? Thanks. You know, I, I'm never going to be able to repay you for what you did. I'm really grateful. That's just part of the job, sir. No, it's more than that. You're a loyal man. That's valuable. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm curious, though. Why the switch to the football after the plane? Personal reason, sir. <laughs> I've got a lot of faults, Connolly. Stupidity is not one of them. People are going to be coming to you for all kinds of reasons. I'm hoping that I can rely on your discretion. I found out that in this business, making the right kind of friends makes all the difference. Oh, keep that in mind, sir. Thank you. Good luck to you. To uh, old times, right? Yes, to old times. Jack, you look well. You seem surprised by that. I see the news. Yes, so does everyone. I regret. I seem to have been the cause of some of your problems. No, 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 Ken. It's not your fault. It's a two-way street. We appreciated your generosity, and our opponents didn't. Well, in any event, your cares rest upon you as lightly as the first snow on autumn leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I felt that you wanted to... Jack, I know the reason you've come. Gotta love this weather, huh? Jesus. I gotta say, this patch thing is working, though. It's a lot better than those pills. You guys are lucky you don't get seasick. <sighs> hey, what do you think it's costing this guy, Ken Fung, taking this tub out on a pleasure cruise with no paying customers? The question is, who cares? It's his money. I mean, for the sake of argument. According to Burke, there's less than 50 people on board. Ten of us, ten of nuns guys, the president, a few crew members. I mean, for one night only. So what do you think? How much? What do you think, Gary? Probably give even less of a shit than Mike does. All right, all right. Be that way. You hear that? There it is again. Yeah, I heard it, Joe. Elroy said he's taking care of it. <sighs> Chinese, German, French. This fun guy, he's got the whole goddamn United Nations working for him. Joe. Shut up. What you ask is out of the question, Jack. Why? You're the perfect man for the job. Jack, I do almost anything you wish me to do. Harmless. I simply cannot act as intermediary between my country and the mainland. But you've been doing business with the mainland for years. As long as they were not threatening my country, I was willing to do that. But the present situation makes this impossible. And as to the leadership... I know. The same men who now rule China are the same men who, when my father defected, had his family shot and then sent him a bill the cost of the bullets. If this atrocity I've overlooked in the hope that peaceful trade between our two countries would lead to greater peace and eventually perhaps even democracy on the mainland. I was hoping that your act of reconciliation would be an example for your countrymen. And what would my countrymen think of me after the forced repatriation? 
as they watch their rights, their human dignity, stripped away. China's making some progress in the area of human rights. Oh, Jack, save that for the American public. Any progress being made is in, is in the backward direction. You and I both know your policy of engagement is nothing but a thin disguise to allow your corporations the illusion that they have access to the single largest market on Earth. I know this only because, until recently, I was a victim of the same illusion. Your own history teaches you that freedom is a gift bought with steel, not gold. We are not getting into a shooting war with China over Taiwan. It's as simple as that. We're both getting over heat, Jack. Tamron Sorbet, Mr. President, to clear the palace. Clear the air. Perhaps a moratorium on the subject will be in order, at least during dinner. Agreed. Deck two, how's it look down there? All clear, deck two. Detail one, this is Elroy. Detail one, go ahead. We saw the communication problem. Thor brought in some new headsets for his men. They're running a higher frequency than ours, so no more crosstalk. Well, that's too bad. I was starting to think I was going to learn to speak Chinese before this trip was over. Hey, how's the food out there? Fine. Why? I thought maybe you could bring us some pot stickers or some egg rolls or something. Apparently, that's too much to ask. Bunch of fucking. Taking over a few minutes early. I'm gonna take a leak. Not a problem. <sighs> I think fine would have the money to keep the air conditioner running on this thing. The can. It's on the right side of the boat, right? Not right. Starboard. So it's on the left? No. Left is port, right is starboard. So what side is it on? Starboard. That's the that's the right. Correct. Just fucking with you, Joe. Just go take your goddamn leak. Jesus, relax, Gary. What's up, Johnson? It's three minutes since the last time you checked. You okay? I'm fine. Problems at home? Did Mike tell you that? No, just a guess. You were fine when you left the office last night. I'd rather not get into it. Fine. I'm not going anywhere, if you want to talk about it. I guess Elroy's not coming through with the food thing, huh? Compliments of the chef. You're a mind reader. 
Looks great. What's going on? Where's Agent Johnson? Men's room, asking me to watch the door. Oh, I see. What's going on in there? Private, no access. Well, <clears throat> sorry, pal. <laughs> this is an all access pass. Don't move. Execute Plan Tiger. I repeat, execute Plan Tiger. What the hell was that? Condition red, condition red. I'm in on deck five. Secure all corridors. We got a breach. Security team, we have a condition rare. as soon as you got it. Kind of like how many injuries? Unknown, but they have automatic weapons. Stay down. Keep your heads down. Connolly. Ooh, sorry about that. Con Connolly. Shit. Burke. Go! Burke. Men downstairs with automatic weapons, sir. I'm ignorant to the status of that situation right now due to communications failure. Can you get the comm room? Communications. Comm room, go ahead. Comm room. We have an emergency. I need an all-frequency mayday distress signal to the USS Nimitz. We are requesting immediate assistance. Yes, sir. Right away. Right, they're less than 350 miles away. Good. SEAL Team 6 is on board. They can be here in 30 to 45. Gary. Shut up. What the hell are you doing? Exactly what I was told to do. No. That's what you were told to do. Now get that case and let's go. You're getting close.
floor is yours, Mr. Fung. Everything's under control. Trust. Ah, the star of the evening show has arrived. Talk to Mr. Thorne, I have a little problem to take care of. Do it. Open the case, Mr. Phillips. Nobody said anything about opening the case. Mr. Phillips, even if he opens it, there's absolutely nothing you can do with it. You're quite right, Jack. I'm waiting, Mr. Phillips. He can't do anything without me. Yes, he can, Jack. Thornton, have Conroon call Washington. Communications. We need Washington. Don't do it. They've got my family, sir. They'll kill them if I don't. Phillips. They're probably already dead. I have them, sir. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your daughter? Hello? Hello, sweetheart. Sweetheart, give the phone back to the man now. Hello, Chang. Could you count to ten? If I don't reach ten, do nothing. If I reach ten, execute your order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mr. Phillips. Wait, 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 wait! God! Threatening the U.S. and China with a launch? I don't make empty threats, Jack. Once I have the codes, I will launch a limited nuclear strike on China. Pay 
Beijing specifically. Is this revenge for your family? No. What then? <sighs> the devastation will destabilize the government. And then a number of generals I'm in league with will seize control. And I'll lead the Chinese people into a new dawn of enlightenment, freedom for a people who have historically known only enslavement. And to tomorrow, your own campaign slogan, Jack, a new beginning. <laughs> Fire on China, there will be a massive retaliation. And your point is? It's total annihilation. There won't be any goddamn people for you to enlighten. <laughs> you forget, Jack. I have the control case. Oh, I'll make sure no other U.S. missiles are launched in response to a Chinese assault. Your thumbprint. No. Please, Jack, cooperate with me. I'm not going to cooperate. If you don't allow a clean scan, Thornton will only be too happy to cut off your thumb and use it without you. Same goes for your eye. Do it. Oh, for goodness sake, I love you, Jack. How can I do such a thing? Tan? Jack, this is Tan. Forced from medical practice by the enlightened reforms of the Cultural Revolution. The government decided one day that he should farm instead. When he protested, they cut his tongue out. I'm afraid he wasn't a very good farmer, so he's quite grateful for the opportunity to practice medicine again. Now, in a little while, whether you want to or not, you will. Team leader. Come in, team leader. This is team leader. Identify yourself. Thornton? This is Mike Connolly. Mike, you all right? What the hell's going on? I haven't had any communications with anybody. We have the situation under control. Where are you? I'm in the, uh, I'm in the purser's office. Are the, uh, are the president and the football secure? Affirmative. I'm looking at them both right now. Good. Let me talk to Burke. I'm sorry, Mike. Burke's dead. You stay where you are. I'll send someone down to bring you back up here. How long before these guys get here? They should be there any time. to my call. Sorry. 
Where were you? I'm here. Mm -hmm. You're here now, but you were off somewhere a million miles away. <laughs> the idea of this picnic was so we could spend some time together, you know, away from everybody. Hmm? Everybody? They come with a job, Michael. So tell me, what is it? Good rest, I'm fine. I'm fine. I think you're worried about the kids. I just can't stand the thought of them in L.A. You can't stand the thought of them with my mom. I don't have a problem with your mom. Uh-huh. And you, you? I don't. I do, 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 do. You do. Don't deny it. <laughs> She did raise five children. Yes, yeah, so see. And she did a pretty good job with me, no? Uh, average, I suppose. contact with the security team uh, 25 minutes ago. There's no indication of any satellite malfunction or any sudden loss of communication from uh, unnatural phenomena. This is not good. And it gets worse. Someone has opened the football. It's been 15 minutes. It's time to contact the vice president. Hey, Mr. Team Leader. Mike, is that you? You can stop the mic crap now. I know exactly whose team you're leading. You and Mr. Fung are gonna have to go on one hell of a recruiting drive when this is over with. What are you talking about? Stop the bullshit, Craig. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Thornton, this is growing tiresome. Terminate all conversation. Better listen to your boss, Craigie. You don't want him to forget you when the Christmas bonuses come around. has monitored some faint signals, probably from handheld radios. They're weak, but they might indicate Look, we can speculate to the cows come home about what's happened to the president, but the fact is, if the case has been opened, and we know it has, it's for one purpose. Now, his captors, now that is assuming he's been kidnapped, are planning a nuclear assault. What about the football? No, can there's we, nothing uh, we can do about that. The president's mobile because... command post cannot be superseded. That's the purpose of the device. Absolute control. If any link between the device and the nuclear arsenal is broken, that would jeopardize the entire chain of command. Now, as long as that signal is working, we can't do a goddamn thing. General Peterson, I have Ken Fung on the secure channel. He wishes to speak to the Vice President, sir. Good evening, Vice President Valdez. Where is the President? The President? Oh, he's quite safe, I assure you. I am not the trusting type. I'm afraid in this situation, you have no one to choose but to learn to be. <laughs> 
first to begin. Any intrusion by air or sea within a 200 miles radius of the ship will result in the death of your president as well as the launch of your entire nuclear arsenal. Oh, ho, ho. that got your attention. He's bluffing. I'm quite serious, I assure you. Thanks to your president's cooperation, however reluctant. You see, I have the access codes to launch every missile the United States government currently possesses. And I will not hesitate to do so if provoked. Brutal. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. What is it you want from us, Mr. Fang? It's quite simple, really. You have 24 hours to obtain diplomatic recognition of Taiwan by the People's Republic of China, along with a signed pledge ratified by your Congress to bring full weight of US military might to bear should the Chinese ever attack Taiwan. Neither the Chinese government nor mine will ever agree to that. Then I'm afraid you have a rather large problem on your hands, Gloria. We we'll interrupt this program to bring you a very special report. Mr. Fung, it's come to our attention that you haven't paid your ship to shore bill this month. I'm afraid we're going to have to disconnect your ass. The cut! Now! Who the hell is this? Identify yourself. This is Special Agent Michael Connolly of the Presidential Detail. I'm assigned to protect the football. Well, is that right, Mr. Connolly? Well, you're doing one hell of a job. Agent Connolly, the football, can you get to it? Destroy it? I'm working on it, ma'am. I'm a little short-handed here. I have reason to believe I'm the only agent left alive on this ship. Well, that briefcase must be destroyed at all costs, Connolly. One moment. I have just been informed that on its present course, the ship will enter Chinese territorial waters within 10 minutes. We risk war with the Chinese if we attempt a rescue operation once it is inside these limits. Give me my orders, ma'am. I need you to stop the ship and destroy the football. Yes, ma'am. Good luck, Connolly. Stop the ship. Why should we call an airstrike on that ship before Fung knows what hit him? Those planes can be on top of him in way less than 10 minutes. Ma'am, Fung has given us 24 hours to come up with a solution for this. An airstrike is a premature response to this crisis. It's simple arithmetic. The Chinese have been historically preoccupied with the Russians. Now, the number of missiles they have that can actually reach our shore is estimated to be 30 DF-5s. That's right, 30. All single warhead ICBMs. We don't know that. We still don't have an accurate intelligence assessment as to whether they've been able to merv their warheads with a miniaturization technology they stole from us. It's possible some or all of them may be merv. It's also possible that the DF-41 has been deployed in certain silos. That risk is manageable. If you consider mutual annihilation manageable, then yes, I'd have to agree. Ma'am, I, I urge you to let these events play themselves out before taking precipitous action. Perhaps Agent Connolly will be successful, at least in buying us time. Connolly, uh, is he the one that... Uh... Yes. He's a head case. That's what he is. Here's a file on him. He saw two shrinks in the last year. Family counseling and mandatory sessions regarding the shooting on the plane? You call that a head case? I call that enough for me not to put my eggs in that basket. Now, you think about it, ma'am. You really think that one man can stop that ship in eight minutes? I would like to speak to the commander of the Nimitz, please. Yes, ma'am. Stand by, Nimitz. I have Rear Admiral Harrington for the Vice President. This is Harrington. This is Vice President Valdez. We have a situation with the president. We've lost communications with him. I need you to stand by to launch an airstrike on the Sumar. Say again. 
I need you to stand by to launch an airstrike on the Sumaru. The president is on board that ship, ma'am. The president is under the control of a foreign power. For all we know, he's dead by now. So no matter what his fate, he has ceased to be your commander-in-chief. By executive order, I'm commanding you to destroy that vessel by any means necessary. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I'll give the order. The ship has crossed the 12-mile limit. Obviously, Agent Conley failed. General Peterson, contact the Nimitz. What for? I'm calling off the strike. What? Just do it. Yes, ma'am. Ken, don't do this. I'm sorry, Jack. This is for the greater good. We have activation codes on one silo. We have a confirmed launch. Destination. Specific target information won't become apparent for the next 10 to 12 minutes. For the side of those last Korean codes were designated for China. General Peterson, contact President Andreev and assure him that the missiles are not targeted for Russia. Get me Chairman Zhu. Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow, this is Patrol 1. Rendezvous in two minutes. Be down momentarily. The boat is here. Mr. Chairman, we are not responsible. We have no quarrel with you. Ken Fun seized the president and launched the missile using his portable command center. And how do you think we should respond? Should I just believe your fairy tale? Shall we just sit still and let you rain death on us? We're trying to find a way to get the missile to self-destruct. And if you fail? We will provide you with a precise trajectory. Perhaps you can shoot it out of the sky. You and I both know that is impossible. I'm showing missile activity over China. One ICBM headed our way. ETA for possible target, 27 minutes. There's no need for retaliation, Mr. Chairman. We are not attacking you. I am speaking of reality. You are speaking of fantasy. One of your missiles is headed for our country. And now, one of our missiles is being launched in retaliation, whether or not you see the need for it. And I, for an I. Mr. Chairman, please. Please, you mustn't do this. It is already done. Mr. Chairman, we will... I told you their arsenal was no match for ours. That's why they're only countering with equal force. Now, in a full-scale shoot-up, we would decimate their country. They know that. What do you suggest? You tell that bastard we'll fire everything we got at him if he doesn't self-destruct that ICBM.
fun where it is, Agent Conley. Put your hands on top of your head. All right, all right. Take it easy. Don't shoot. This whole room is wired to blow. But I guess you already knew that. Yes. There's at least 50 more just like that place throughout the ship. Tell Iris to return whether or not she has found Connolly. Tiger One, any sign of him? No sign of Connolly yet, sir. Worth the search, your right is here. Yes, sir. I'll be right up. All right. You win. I'm confused as hell. I work for the Chinese government, a deep cover operative. For over five years, my mission has been to gather intelligence about Fong's organization. So what? I thought his plan was simply to steal the football. I planned to steal it back from him in order to take it back to Beijing. I didn't know he would actually launch missiles against my homeland. He did what? My leaders, in turn, would undoubtedly retaliate against the U.S. So, I believe you and I have a common interest. Yes? Yes. Who did that? Thornton did. Love that guy. Come on. Ma'am, I have the coordinates of the incoming missile. Makes sense. Eye for an eye. What are we gonna do now? This thing's gonna blow. Come on, quickly. Admiral Harrington, ma'am. Ma'am. Admiral Harrington. Admiral, have the planes returned? Yes, all aircraft have returned. With all ordnance aboard and accounted for. I can't say the same for the target, though. What do you mean? Ma'am, the Sumeru has vanished from our radar screens here. I have double checked with other vessels. Ma'am, I have a search and rescue chopper sitting on our flight deck, ready to go. I'll send her up with your permission. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Send her up. Aye, aye, sir. The blocking signal seems to be transmitting from the President's mobile command post. Seems to be heading for Hong Kong. So they've escaped. Can we intercept them? Ms. Vice President, you risk escalating this crisis by violating your sovereignty. The military would be on the highest alert status. If, if their coastal radar picks up any of our ships or our aircraft as being even remotely threatening... So he still has the case. He still is capable of launching a full attack. And we can't stop it. Zoo, 
I deeply regret what's happened. But for the sake of both of our countries, it is imperative that you self-destruct the missile that's headed for Washington. Is it? Less than a kilometer above my head, my own capital is in flames. And you have the audacity to ask for such a thing. Yes, ma'am. Don't be fucking around with these people, Eileen. Yeah. yeah, somehow I knew that. General Wei, allow me to present the President of the United States. I believe you have met. Yes, several times. Guy lets a chick kick his ass. I would have kicked your ass too if you would have put up a better fight. What are you talking about? Back on the boat? You had a gun. So did he. Just get into his clothes. What do you mean, reconsidering? It's too late to reconsider. The others with me are against me. I won't tolerate disloyalty. Tough to get good help these days, huh? Woo. Go tell the soldiers that I will be ready in five minutes. Speak up. We need the element of surprise. So much for surprise.
Eagle Pass. I'm out or I'll shoot the president. So, we finally meet, Mr. Connolly. Allow me to present General Wayne. He was kind enough to lend me his pistol. How nice of him. Does he speak English? Of course. Good. General Way, I don't have any personal problem with you, but I will not hesitate to shoot your ass if I have to. I suggest you leave. Drop the case. No! You drop your weapon, or I'll kill the president! And if he doesn't, I will. Give it up, Mike. He's not worth it. Drop the case. You don't want to be responsible for the death of your president, do you? Connolly, remember your duty. Yes, Mr. Connolly, remember your duty. You're a member of the Secret Service, sworn to protect the President of the United States! No. That's some other guy's job. I'm on football duty. Shoot me. You did the right thing, too, sir. President, don't you worry, sir. I'm gonna get you out of here. A lot of things, not stupid things. This makes us even. Wait, the blocking signal has disappeared. You have control and command. Open the channel to NORAD and keep it open. Yes, ma'am. NORAD, stand by for orders from Eagle One. I repeat, NORAD, stand by for orders from Eagle One. Mr. Chairman, we have good news. We have overridden the President's mobile command unit. You may now instruct your generals to self-destruct your incoming missiles. I'm afraid that's impossible, Vice President Valdez. Well, it's, it's possible. Their missiles have gone past the range of their self-destruct signal. Oh, shit. They're willing to risk this exchange, thinking we still don't have complete control. Chairman Su, let me be absolutely clear on this. If you do not order your missiles to self-destruct immediately, we will have no choice but to order a full-scale retaliation. The theatrics are unnecessary. We both know... Norad, this is Eagle One. Stage one is a go. I repeat, stage one is a go. This is really quite pathetic. With all your respect, Mr. Chairman, shut your fucking mouth and watch your screen. Some interesting things are happening in the world you might want to know about.
you will permit me a moment. No, Mr. Chairman. I won't. I'm going to make it real simple for you. We are in control of our nuclear arsenal once again. You have exactly one minute to self-destruct these weapons. If you destroy your missiles, we will destroy ours. I understand. Good. Because you don't want to know what stage two is. up. You need to order a full-scale counterattack before it's too late. He's doing it. As you requested, we have ordered the destruction of our ICPMs. Please order the destruction of yours. Wise choice, Mr. Chairman. No rad. Order self-destruct. Ma'am. Good job. Thank you, General. Thank you. He took a bullet for it. Yeah. So did you. I suppose that makes us both a couple of assholes. No. Just you. My fellow Americans, today I come to you to enlist your help as we all begin the first steps on the long road to rebuilding our capital. But more important, the first steps in ensuring the safety of our planet and the future for our children. To those countless many of you who have lost loved ones in this incomprehensible tragedy, I can offer only my deepest condolences and say that I share that pain with you every minute I draw breath. But if there is to be any hope at all for this nation, for this planet, we must rise above our grief and our anger with those who are different from us and who have injured us and try with all that is within us, to fulfill the promise that our late president and myself made to you so long ago, to create a new beginning for all of us. In this effort, I ask for your help and your prayers. God bless you all, and God bless America. <laughs>